You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, this weekend in D.C., the Trump people, as I've said, they have not been able to handle losing. Uh, and so they gathered in... Um, Washington, D.C., and the racist domestic terrorists, the Proud Boys, came and acted like the thugs that they are, uh, beating folks, terrorizing folks. But what really has angered people is the tearing down of Black Lives Matter signs from two black churches, Asbury Methodist Church and Metropolitan AME Church as well. Uh, I'm, many people are asking, where were the cops? What was going on? Where were the federal authorities? We saw all this huge show of force and Black Lives Matter was out there protesting, but what about this? Well, Carl Racine is the Attorney General for the District of Columbia, uh, and uh, he joins us right now. Carl, glad to have you in Roland Martin Unfiltered. How you doing there, Roland? Uh, very proud of your success in killing uh, this platform. Well, sir, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Um, what happened this weekend? I, I was. It was shocking to see uh, these thugs just rampaging through the streets as if there were, there were no cops around uh, to stop what, what they were doing. Um, what, as any, as any the D.C. police or the federal authorities uh, explain what, what in the world happened this weekend? Well, I, a, a lot happened this weekend. I think, first of all, the president of the United States executed on his plan as he indicated during uh, the debate with President-elect Joe Biden. You remember the line, stand back, but stand by. Uh, he is now implementing that plan where he's asking the Proud Boys to no longer stand by. And as you correctly noted, they are a hate group, a white supremacist extremist group, uh, who are obviously trying to destabilize the core principles of equality of our country. With regard to what occurred in the District of Columbia, you had a group of, honestly, hate mongers out to create havoc and distraction. And once they distracted the Metropolitan Police Department enough, they went ahead, as I'm sure they planned, and sought to desecrate African-American churches. There is no coincidence that the AME Church over uh, right by 17th and Rhode Island was targeted. That church, of course, is the sister church to Mother Emanuel in Charleston, where just a few years ago, Dylan Roof executed a number of peaceful and loving parishioners. I'm happy to talk about the Metropolitan Police Department if you would allow me to, to take another a minute. Is that okay? Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me just tell you what I know. And I know this because our lawyers at the Office of Attorney General uh, were following literally radio feeds going in and out from the police department uh, to certain law enforcement officials, including our own. The Metropolitan Police Department were literally deluged minute by minute with all manner of events. And overwhelmingly, and I'm gonna speak very honestly because I don't mind being critical of the police when it is appropriate. Overwhelmingly, the Metropolitan Police Department successfully separated folks who were going to literally go after each other. And we saw stabbings and assaults and the police were tending to those they were not in position to protect the entirety of the city. And I'm not being defensive here. I know that if the Metropolitan Police Department could have known that those two churches were gonna be targeted, I firmly believe they would have had the appropriate level of security there. I don't think there was any intention uh, nor carelessness, recklessness, or grave neglect on the part of the police department. I think they were trying to do, honestly, the best job they could. And the hate mongers should be the story, not the Metropolitan Police Department, who tried the best they could. 
Well, are you and others analyzing the video? Are there any plans uh, to charge uh, these proud boys, these white domestic terrorists uh, with any crimes? It's a fair and great question. Let me just say a couple of things about the Office of Attorney General of the District of Columbia. As you know, the District of Columbia is an unusual jurisdiction. We don't have the ability as D.C. local prosecutor to actually charge the kind of adult offenses that would be pursued against individuals and indeed the institution that is the Proud Boys. The prosecutor for those events are instead the federal prosecutor. And the federal prosecutor is appointed by the President of the United States. I know that the Metropolitan Police Department is investigating this matter. I wish I could be the prosecutor in my office who could bring these cases. Now's the time to put the pressure on the federal prosecutor to do its job to bring the hate crime cases against those people who violated the rights of the church and otherwise caused havoc in our streets. Uh, well, it, it certainly was certainly was shocking and stunning for a lot of people uh, to see what happened, to see um, what, what they did uh, desecrating uh, those two black churches. Clearly, uh, they were targeted as well. Uh, and so we, we, you know, we certainly hope that the federal, federal government would do what they're supposed to do. Well, you know, again, we're, what we're dealing with is, of course, uh, Donald Trump uh, and his minions as well. But uh, it, it, was, uh, it, it, it was pathetic to see, again, those individuals, uh, you, know, you know, bringing their hate down the street. And, and what really uh, just bugs me to death, white conservative evangelicals have been real quiet. They've said nothing about the attacks on these black They said churches. zero, Roland. You're exactly right. The leader of the Proud Boys visited the White House. Get this right. A hate group leader visited the White House. And then, hours later, went about desecrating black churches. Roland, may I raise an issue with you tonight? Yeah, go ahead. There are reports that Attorney General Bill Barr just resigned. I think it's effective in some days or so shortly before Christmas. Yeah, de Have de you de heard of that? Yeah, December 23rd. He he, yeah, yeah, he has resigned, effective December 23rd. I am deeply concerned, Roland, as I sit here tonight, about Bill Barr's resignation. Bill Barr has done Donald Trump's bidding since he came into office as attorney general. In a way, Bill Barr was like an accomplice, maybe a driver who was involved in wrongdoing. The fact that he is leaving the car right now tells me that maybe Mr. Barr, who's done the bidding of Donald Trump, doesn't want to do the bidding of what is planned next. I believe that this is a five alarm fire for all of us to listen to and that we need every respected leader, spiritual, religious, political, business and military to tell Donald Trump to cease and desist his undemocratic and dangerous actions we need General Mattis, perhaps one of the most respected individuals in our country, to come out now and urge the military to not participate in any way in whatever Donald Trump has planned. Thank you, Roland. Carl Racine, Attorney General for District of Columbia. We certainly sure, sure, appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Now I want to go to uh, our panel here. Joining us uh, on today's panel is Julian, Mal Julian Malvo, economist, president emerita at Bennett College, uh, Teresa Lundy, principal founder, TML Communications, Joseph Williams, senior editor at U.S. News and World Report. Uh, it was uh, certainly um, something to behold, uh, Julian, to see those 
uh, white domestic terrorists uh, rampaging uh, down the street, beating people, harassing people, uh, and, and to see what they did to the, to the Black Lives Matter signs uh, at, um, at Asbury Methodist as well as, um, as well as Metropolitan AME. You know, Metropolitan AME Church is my church. It's where I worship, unfortunately, now online. But, you know, uh, I joined about four years ago. I adore my pastor who has much more equanimity than I do about this. This nonsense, Roland, is ridiculous. How do you put yourself onto church property, trespass, trespass, tear signs down, burn them? This does remind us, as the pastor at Ashburn said, it reminds us of, of cross burning. It was just totally ridiculous. With these white trash, white trash, came looking for a fight. Because everybody could find the had Is that the hate had been all along? Hate could go back to enslavement. There's a hate that he unleashed. And I must tell you, Roland, that I am sickened by what had happened on Saturday evening and over the weekend. I want to go to Joseph Williams. Joseph, uh, again, uh, to see what happened, uh, I would think that federal authorities should be examining those videos uh, and, again, uh, using artificial intelligence uh, to find out who those folks were and to prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Well, and the local news has said that they're doing just that, that they're examining a lot of uh, the videos that were taken, a lot of videos that have shown up on news networks of exactly what was happening. I mean, the, 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 the cross-burning analogy is spot on, but even that seems too mild because they went after a church, which is sacred ground, which is uh, trespassing to the nth degree. But there are two things that really concern me um, uh, about what I just heard with your interview with Carl Racine. The first is uh, he mentioned that the Metropolitan Police Department didn't necessarily uh, have the manpower uh, to track these groups or didn't uh, have the, 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 the ability to track all the scatter shot violence that was going on. Um, that concerned me a little bit. Number one, because back when the George Floyd protests were happening, they had choppers in the air. They had mm -hmm. extra manpower on the ground. They had all kinds of things going on to, to make sure that they surveilled these people and that they knew where they were going ahead of time. Uh, that's concern number one. Concern number two is I, I, his, his comment about Bill Barr is just resonating in my head. And I'm like, holy mackerel, if this guy is saying that he's ringing the alarm bell about the departure of Trump's number one ally, there must be something incredibly mind blowing about the fact that this man, presumably who has at least a little bit more information and more context than we do, that there's something afoot and that is not good. Roland, I know I'm speaking out of turn, but here, let me just say one more uh, thing. Uh, uh, Mayor, what, 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 Mayor Bowser, like I said, I know I'm speaking out of turn, but let me just say this. Mayor Bowser has been ahead of the game up until now. Now she's behind the game. She could have put troops out there, police out there. Peter Newsom has resigned his position. He's going to some small district with a $40,000 pay cut so he could get away from all of us, quite frankly. And, but the mayor should have, she's been doing a good job with COVID, but this is where she has dropped the ball and we just need, need, need to make it clear. She's a sister, she all that, but this is on her watch. Teresa, um, this is not going to be the last time we see this. I mean, folks had, folks had better be prepared because Trump and his minions, especially these Proud Boys, these thugs, are so angry that he lost and Trump is stoking them uh, and not even not even in a light way. They cannot and we would be we would be real careful between now and inauguration. They simply cannot accept the fact that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris beat Donald Trump. And groups like this, these radical, um, you know, right wing, almost conservatives, almost, you know, just those groups that just choose not to believe in democracy and the way things work. So these are the people who I, I like to call the forgotten ones, those who you know feel like they've been empowered by 
you know, a leader that, you know, maybe strokes their ego or strokes some sort of, um, you know, some, some radical play that allows them to feel good about themselves, which is so interesting because some of these people are working directly in the institutions that we seek to change. So, no, they're not going to be happy with what's going to happen when Kamala Harris and Joe Biden gets in. I think it is very interesting. Dr. Julianne brings up a great point that the mayor of D.C., phenomenal woman, but she did drop the ball. There were things that she could have done, but you know what? We're not in that administration, so we do not know if she did try and, you know, something else happened. But I do believe if we're going to spread Black Lives Matter in yellow across the streets of Washington, D.C., we should have a better understanding of the ones who are taking part in this rally, but also some 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 pro uh, defense mechanisms that could have happened in order for some of those issues not to uh, take place. Well, we're certainly going to be monitoring this, and uh, we hope to see. Uh, ho- we certainly hope to see uh, charges uh, level against these individuals uh, for their actions. I did reach out to the pastor of. Metropolitan AME to see if he can join us. Uh, he was unable to do so tonight, uh, but we certainly uh, uh, they have a standing invitation. Uh, the pastor Lamar does to come on here uh, at any time. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.